outnumbered American fighter pilots battle marauding Japanese airmen to control the skies over a sweltering Pacific island called Guadalcanal. During a grueling six-month slugfest, their combat in the sky will help decide the course of the Pacific War. August 7, 1942, America launches its first amphibious assault of World War II. Over 11,000 U.S. Marines storm ashore at Guadalcanal. The Marines quickly gain a foothold on the island. By the second day, they take the Japanese airstrip, renaming it Henderson Field. The Japanese bring in thousands of fresh troops to Guadalcanal and attack the Americans relentlessly, trying to drive them off the island. The Marines fight off attacks while desperately trying to prepare Henderson Field for operations. Japanese tractors and equipment are commandeered to improve the small crushed coral runway. Bomb damage is repaired and PSP, perforated steel planking, is hurriedly laid down. After two weeks, they finish the airstrip and fly in 19 F-4F Wildcat fighters and 12 SBD Dauntless dive bombers. It was only because of the ability of the Americans to place aircraft on Henderson Field to protect the supply ships bringing in reinforcements and supplies to the Marines on Guadalcanal that the island could be held. Because the Allied code name for Guadalcanal is Cactus, Henderson Field becomes the home of the tiny Cactus Air Force, at first consisting of just 43 pilots and ground crew. The men of Henderson Field soon discover it isn't just the enemy making their lives hell. The island was a fly-infested, dirty, stinking, blood-soaked, damned island that uh, it was just dangerous to even walk on the beaches because there was so much unexploded ammunition around. The pilots and ground crew live in mud-floored tents. The latrine is a trench with a log seat, and the bathtub is the Lunga River, complete with crocodiles and leeches. The flyers of the Cactus Air Force are outnumbered and short on supplies. Their fighter, the F-4F Wildcat, can't match the agility of the enemy Zero. But a big advantage for the Cactus Air Force is that they are commanded by a born leader in 27-year-old John Smith. Smith's an aggressive dogfighter and skilled tactician. He always preached and devised his tactics around, you have to pit your strengths against the enemy's weakness. And that is as true today as it ever was since the first airplane ever flew in combat. Now, on August 30th, 1942, Captain John Smith and his men are protecting Guadalcanal from approaching bombers and fighters. In his eight days on the island, Smith has already scored five kills, making him an ace. Today, he's racked up one more. Then he spots another zero below, breaking from a cloud. The zero is here. Smith is here, high above him. He plans to use the Wildcat's diving speed to try and drop behind the Japanese plane. Smith first rolls inverted, then dives. This creates positive G-force instead of negative Gs. You roll on your back, pull aft on the stick, and pull positive Gs so you're pushed into your seat, you can be able to pull more Gs, which means you can pull your nose downhill faster. The maneuver works. Smith rolls back over, then levels out behind the zero, and fires. The Wildcat's six 50 caliber guns deliver 200 rounds in a four second burst. White hot, phosphorus filled incendiary bullets ignite the Zero's fuel tank. But as Smith arcs away from his second victim, the Predator becomes the prey. A Japanese Zero closes in on Smith from dead ahead. 
High above the green jungle canopy of Guadalcanal, the planes converge at over 600 miles per hour. Think of a high-speed game of chicken going directly at your, your target, uh, and no one wants to flinch, because if you flinch, you become defensive, and you have to be pointing at the target to shoot them, so it has to be head-to-head. -head. Once in range, the Zero opens up with his 20-millimeter cannon. Smith answers with his 50 caliber machine guns. It's basically that slugfest all the way to the merge. Who's going to flinch first or who's going to blow up first? Both planes are taking hits, but Smith's Wildcat has thicker armor and he's withstanding the blows. And then the overwhelming firepower of the Navy airplane cut this guy into ribbons. He exploded. And what Smith did is dump the nose over very hard, very abruptly, and flew underneath the debris field and escaped. The Zero has made a fatal error. He fought the Wildcats' fight. Built by Grumman Aircraft, the Wildcat is first flown in 1937. The rugged plane features cockpit armor and self-sealing fuel tanks. These tanks are coated with layers of rubber that expand and reseal if they're punctured. The Wildcat faces the most famous of all Japanese aircraft, the deadly Mitsubishi A6 M30. The lightweight Zero can outturn and outclimb the Wildcat, a lethal advantage in a dogfight. But its thin armor protection and lack of self-sealing fuel tanks means it can't survive a slugging match with the tougher Wildcat. Essentially, in uh, fighter versus fighter combat, the difference between the Wildcat and the Zero is the difference between a battle axe and a rapier. They can both be effective, but they're used uh, somewhat differently. The Zero is faster, more maneuverable, and can outclimb the Wildcat while the Grumman is tougher, more heavily armed, and can outdive the Zero. Wildcat pilots, in general, would want to avoid the turning fight with the Zero. That would not be their fight. The Wildcat with its 650 cal machine guns, heavy body armor, heavy armor around the engine cowling, preferred head-on attacks, frontal attacks, and it would just basically plow through that Zero. The air battle of August 30th is a resounding victory for Smith and his pilots. They shoot down 14 of the 22 attacking Zeros. The Japanese bombers the Zeros were protecting retreat before reaching Guadalcanal. 